Hey guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Naomi Chapumba, aka Nay the Hustler. If it's your first time here, welcome. Please don't forget to subscribe and also give this video a like and click on the notification bell so that every time I upload a video, you will be notified. So guys, in today's video, we are addressing the elephant in the room. So I'm finally sharing with you guys my labor and delivery story. And I also just wanted to share my experience of um, giving birth at a public hospital so when we found out i was pregnant me and my husband had to obviously make a decision whether we we're going to give birth in a private hospital or we we're going to give birth at a public hospital so with me i was totally fine with giving birth at a public hospital because i was honestly living on my savings you know my mom and my husband on the other side wanted me to give birth at a private hospital so most of my family my relatives were like it's really not bad giving giving birth at a public hospital and also i've had experience you know i was going to the clinic for my checkups i was going to the hospital um for my checkups as well because my pregnancy was a high risk pregnancy so i was totally fine um and also i don't have a medical aid <laughs> the last time i had a medical aid i was on my mom's medical aid my reason being is that i hardly get sick and i just felt like <laughs> having a medical aid was a waste of money okay don't take my advice that's what i think all right so disclaimer this is my story this is my experience and also i studied accounting business and economics so i don't know the medical terms for things so i'll try to explain and let you know what exactly i'm talking about um so don't judge if you would like to correct me do correct me on the comment section um, because is it the, the medical I don't know you know um, so I did my research um, like I said my my relatives my family were like not giving birth at a hospital it's totally not bad because this it's like a one-day thing you just go there you give birth and you go home well that's what I wanted to believe and that's what I was praying for so um, we decided okay i'm gonna go give birth at a, a public hospital and there's this quote that i live by here i'm gonna be sharing a lot of quotes with you guys they say if you can't buy something twice you can't afford it so when i did my research giving birth at a private hospital is close to thirty thousand rent so i couldn't buy that twice so yeah and i was also convinced that i was being treated well at the clinics the hospital um i was allowed to ask questions you know doctors were friendly until I found out that um, the guiders that were checking upon me and my baby um, were not the same, might have been not the same doctors that were going to deliver my baby. So I was starting to panic a little bit. And then, okay, so let's get into the video. Um, I'm definitely, I'm thinking of doing a part one and a part two because I don't like talking for long, guys. I easily get... Um, distracted as we get bored so I'm just gonna do a part one which is this is going to be giving birth at a public hospital um, some of it and then also my labor story so I'm gonna do the delivery story again so I'll film another video for that so stay tuned to my channel okay so before I went into labor uh, so I was due in June I was due in June and then I was like, okay, so in May, I'm now in my third trimester, I'm in May 2021, I was like, okay, let me just search, you know, go on YouTube and, and search for mummies that have given birth at a public hospital. I was traumatized. I was traumatized after watching those videos. I was like, Naomi, do you still want to go? Like, Naomi, do you still want to go give birth at a public hospital, or are you changing your mind? Um, so I had already convinced my husband, Guti, you know what? I'm gonna give birth at a public hospital. I'm totally fine with it because, you know, family. My aunt was like, you just go there. Uh, it, it doesn't even take one hour, and then you give birth, and then they check the baby. If the mother is also fine, you are out. And I'm like, I'm just gonna go to the hospital. I'm not gonna you know cause any drama i'm just gonna go there give birth to my child and go back go back home so yeah so if if ever there aren't any complications you give birth today you go back tomorrow like the following day 
So this is what I'm thinking, okay? Until I came on YouTube and I searched for giving birth in a, in a public hospital and then I saw all sorts of nightmares. I saw all sorts of stories. There was a mummy who said that um, she gave birth at a um, public hospital and then she was told that if um, she doesn't take her panties off, um, guys I'm gonna keep it raw okay if you are very uncomfortable about such things please do click off um, and so she was saying that the nurse told her if she doesn't take off her panties um, when the doctor comes to check upon them isn't it doctors come check how far the baby is and all sorts of things so if she didn't take off her panties the doctor was gonna go to the next patient and she had to wait for a different doctor you know or the doctor's other schedule you know if the doctor had to come back that was the only time she was going to get help so that's what they told her and then she also had to bath with cold water she had to take a shower with cold water because the hospital didn't have hot water and then there was another one who said that she had to wait for like two hours for an ambulance ambulance <laughs> i don't know how to pronounce that um because the the hospital said they were out of ambulances weird and then there was another mother who was sharing that um the baby was literally coming and she kept on telling the nurses that the baby's coming but the nurses weren't really taking her serious until when the baby was really like close by so this is something that you wouldn't want to hear this is something that you wouldn't want to watch as a as a first time mom as a pregnant mom who's expecting so i'm watching this thing is in may and i'm due in june okay um, i'm laughing now but i promise you back then i was so traumatized i'm sure if you can search those um videos you're going to find my comment on one of those um videos where i said i i wish i could just go back and say i want to go back and give birth at a at a private hospital so but then I, I kept on convincing myself that um, the doctors were nice to me, the nurses were nice to me, they're not going to switch up with me now. That, that's what I kept on telling myself and I was praying um, because they also said that the best way is to give birth like on a weekday. Um, like you need to give birth at least on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday because if you're going to give birth on a Friday, it might be difficult for you to get discharged. So if you give birth on a Monday allegedly um and then they check that the baby's fine you're fine it's easier for you to be it's easier for you to get discharged the following day so i was just praying to god i'm like god please let me give birth on a monday or tuesday or wednesday or thursday and on the day when i was watching all these videos i was so grumpy guys i was so mad i didn't even tell anyone what i've seen um, so you know when you're pregnant and people are just thinking oh naomi's just having one of her moods so it's nothing serious um, and then the day came where I was I, I saw labor signs um, so I woke up at 2 a.m. it was on a it was on a Sunday I slept and then I woke up at 11 p.m. and then I sat right through until 2 a.m. in the morning um, now if you know me I was experiencing massive heartburn in my pregnancy like it was so bad so i was sitting up the whole time until at 2 a.m in the morning and this day was so weird because my husband normally would sit up with me when i wake up and until i fall asleep uh, or sometimes he would sit up with me and and then he would be sleepy and i'll tell him to fall asleep to sleep it's fine he can go back to sleep but this day my husband was sleeping guys he was sleeping i was like this guy i'm having heartburn and he's here snoring i was so mad about that and at this point um okay we are now in we are now in june okay at this point i can't walk properly um my feet are swollen my tummy is so big i can't see my private part it is chaotic and then somebody ate at 2 a.m every morning without a fail um, I went to the kitchen, I made something to eat, and then I had to go pee. So when I went to go pee, I, I felt like there was something going down like this, waterish going down my, my left leg. So I'm thinking, oh, maybe I made an oopsie. Okay, as a pregnant woman, you are going to make a lot of oopsies. It happens, guys. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Okay, you are going to pee and think 
you've wiped yourself but you haven't wiped yourself so i thought it was one of those oopsies and then i i tried to look closer to what was happening so i saw blood and a bit of water it was just you know going down my left leg going all the way down so i took a toilet paper tried to wipe myself um i thought Ugh, it's just probably gonna go away and then i wiped myself and then it was still dripping it was still going down so <laughs> i'm panicking i'm panicking i'm panicking now i have to wake my husband up i wake my husband up and then i show him what's happening he's like okay what do we do now i don't want to tell my mom because my mom was going to be so dramatic about the whole thing um so i call my aunt shout out to my aunt um and then i call her and then i tell her and and then she says to me you need to rush to the hospital those are like one of the signs of um labor so you need to go to the hospital that isn't like right now the way i was panicking i wanted to just pack my things without bathing and just go so my husband was like no let's let me just give you a quick bath and then we, we're going to go so um so yeah we we done we go to the hospital i believe we arrived there around um two three if not 10 past 3 a.m in the morning this is now a monday it's the 7th of june but my end due date was on the 16th on the 16th of june and also before i get to the part where we went to the hospital so my last visit at 36 weeks at the hospital they told me that they wanted me to go for inducing um and so the doctor checked and then he was like no it was a lady she said okay i think we need to book you for a date for inducing so i've researched about inducing and stuff like that and apparently it is painful it's one of the painful things so people um pregnant mommies refer or prefer rather giving birth naturally so i'm praying to god i'm like no god i don't want to be induced i don't want to be induced so the doctor said okay let me just go fetch my senior the senior doctor to come and confirm so the doctor comes in the room and then he says um no let's just give her some time so that we can see if she won't be able to you know give birth naturally like without any in i don't know if it's induction or inducement or i don't know guys so i'm i'm saying oh thank you lord thank you jesus i didn't want to be induced so okay going back to when we went when we got to the hospital so we we at the hospital at 10 past 3 a.m in the morning i get there um i get my file and then we go to the labor ward so when we go to the labor ward there was a nurse there and then um i explained to her what's happening she said to me i'm not feeling any pain at this point guys no pain no, no whatsoever i'm just i'm just nervous and i feel my heart is racing because i don't know what's happening and then she says to me okay um you're going to need to lie in the bed so i can check how far the baby is guys the fingers yo that are, that is the most uncomfortable okay one of the most uncomfortable things when it comes to pregnancy so she inserts the fingers and she puts this thing on my tummy i don't know what they call that thing to, to check the baby's heart rate and how the baby the baby's heartbeat i believe and um she says the baby's fine and then she inserts her fingers and then she tells me um one centimeter so which means one centimeter it means the baby's still far like the baby's very very far um so now at this point i'm bleeding i've started bleeding and then she says to me no i'm not gonna do anything i'm not gonna say anything um she checked my file and then after checking my file she's like i can't send you back home so the best thing to do is for us to wait for the doctor to arrive the doctors to arrive they should be here by seven o'clock so they can examine you and the baby and see what's happening um so we had to wait so now outside outside we came with my mom and my husband so outside my mom and my husband are panicking they're like yeah we should have went to the private hospital what do they mean the doctors what do they mean the doctors are not here yet you know and i'm like no it's fine I'm, i guess this is how they work i was like more calm than the two so now we are waiting we're waiting but the nurse just still keeps on calling me to come and check up on me to see if i'm still fine you know that thing that they put on your tummy is so painful guys it is so uncomfortable and you have to to do like lay still you know keeps checking 
it's one centimeter i'm bleeding guys i'm bleeding heavily i'm panicking and then the doctors only arrived at i think they arrived at eight they were supposed to be there at seven but i wasn't complaining really so the doctors come and then they tell me to lie down again and then it's the fingers again guys so it's one centimeter still okay so this doctor says to me um we have to admit you because because of my pregnancy state a high-risk pregnancy they can't send me home if i want to go back home i need to sign a form so that i don't come back tomorrow and sue them and if i'm going to allow them to admit me sorry i still need to sign a form when saying I, i'm agreeing for them to admit me okay so in this whole process i'm thinking oh i'm gonna get my baby today <laughs> you know <laughs> I'm laughing about it now because I've healed guys. I was so traumatized, but you will you'll find out and then now I tell my I go back to my husband and I tell him that this is what they are saying that they need to admit me and um, They need to keep track on me and my baby and see how we're doing So my, my 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 husband agrees and then he says okay, we'll wait for you So we are all thinking I'm gonna give birth the same day, All right? Okay, I get admitted. I go to the waiting. I think it's a waiting labor ward where I meet other women, um, pregnant mommies. So I get there, and um, I'm, I get greeted by a male nurse who was very, very nice. Who was very, very sweet. Okay, I stay there. I'm like, okay, let me just um, go take a shower. <laughs> go take a shower. The water is warm. I was very happy about that. And then I went back to my bed. So there, are this mommies. I think about. 30 or an hour into being in the labor ward, there's another lady. Oh, she's screaming, guys. She's screaming. She's like, oh, yo, yo. I'm like, yo, it can't be that bad. Um, she's screaming. She's she's standing up on her feet. She's walking around. She's doing all these things that are so uncomfortable. Now I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm like, oh my gosh, is it that painful? It can't be that painful. So the, the male nurse was just trying to explain to us on, um, you know, why we should be on the bed. We shouldn't move around because you might hurt the baby. So if you are feeling any pain, just lie down on your bed, lie down on the side or, you know, face up, but don't walk around or don't, yeah, don't walk around. Don't sit uncomfortably or, or don't sleep on your tummy and stuff like that. Okay. So this male nurse also comes finger guys comes and checks up on me i'm still one centimeter guys one centimeter okay this is like around um because he kept on checking me guys he kept on checking me i think every after two hours he came to check i was still one centimeter guy one one centimeter and then i asked him what are the possibilities you know if i don't give birth it's like ah oh, the possibilities are you, you can go for inducing or if inducing inducement or induction i don't know guys but you know what i mean right if it doesn't work then you are going to go for for surgery you know then you need to have an operation you know in order for them to take out the baby and i'm praying to god i'm like please god please let me give birth naturally i am seriously begging you i don't want any inducing any um operation any whatsoever all right so i'm chilling there i'm eating my maniacs i used to love maniacs drinking my water minding my business Hey, another lady starts yo 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 i'm like every time someone starts i'm just freaked out I'm like what is happening it cannot be this painful you know and then after two three hours of me being there people are giving birth mummies are giving birth that's when i really started being stressed now um people who came before me are going to give birth people who came after me are going to give birth to a point where i was all by myself in the labor ward and the male nurse was really nice to me guys i wish i knew what his name was you know he was so sweet um and then he was just saying no don't panic some 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 women take long you know to give birth you don't give birth at the same time just trying to calm it down because you could literally see guys you see this girl is freaking out so now i'm feeling bad that everyone is giving birth except me and, and and then you start to question god guys like what is wrong with me what is happening at this point i'm bleeding heavily i'm bleeding so much guys i'm bleeding so bad 
like it's pad after pad after pad after pad i had like three maternity um pads and at this point i was running out and then my husband was still outside you know waiting they were thinking i was gonna give birth this time my my husband and my mom are still outside my aunt has come my cousin sister has come and they like just waiting for me to give birth and um it's not happening i'm still on one centimeter i told them they need to go back and they say no they're just gonna wait a little a little longer and i was like okay they must, they must just go it's fine i'll be fine i'm okay and then they like no we're going to wait so they wait until five o'clock still nothing guys nothing is happening so they go back home at five still nothing guys people mummies are coming before me after me they leaving nah one centimeter guys no pain but i'm bleeding guys i'm bleeding i'm just feeling uncomfortable i'm feeling like um i'm feeling like i'm gonna go i'm, I'm gonna go on my periods and then the the nurses and the doctors they kept checking on my baby and they said the baby is still fine the baby is okay and i'm okay so it's okay you know and it's the fingers guys it's 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 uncomfortable it is so uncomfortable it is so uncomfortable you know and then that thing that they put here for the, for the baby's heart rate and then i slept um the following day which is now a tuesday so on a tuesday the doctors no the nurses come they need to change shift and then they explain to each other what's wrong with what and so forth and then the doctors came and oh sorry so at night ne, i felt i felt pain which i felt was like so much pain and then the doctor asked me if i had any pains at night um and then i told him I, I told him yes i had i had pains i had massive pain it's like no they're false labor pain and i'm like Kanti, how does this pain really feel like i'm so sad i'm so this is not what i prayed for this is not what i wanted you know i wanted to give birth and go home the next day not be in the hospital the next day waiting for my baby i'm still on one centimeter now there's like three doctors on my bed and they deciding on what to do so one doctor says um it's best if i go for induction or inducing inducement is it inducement please comment down below because i heard one i heard one lady say it's induction so now the doctors are like no you need to go for inducement or inducing and i'm like this is not what i prayed for this is not what i wanted why do i have to go there why am i going for inducement it's not what i i don't want to hey i don't want this you know because i've heard that it's 10 times more than natural labor pains and i'm like i do not want this and then we go we have to we have to go to another room um the inducement or induction room <sighs> my husband is panicking guys my husband are now back the following morning They're asking me how it's going i'm still on one centimeter guys still one centimeter nothing is happening i get to that other word i'm there i'm i'm now crying guys i'm crying i'm like i don't want to be and they're like this that's the only way we can save you and the baby because now the baby might be tired and then you are bleeding you know so we need to we need to try and see what works i was literally crying guys i'm like but i didn't want to be induced i didn't want this and um eventually i got calmed down guys i honestly my my experience at a public hospital was not bad guys it was not bad at all um there was a little glitching Anna, but <laughs> i'll probably share that in the next video but it wasn't it wasn't as epic as hectic as some mummies have experienced so i'm there now um they need to give me a dosage of the inducing this word guys so they give me the the dosage in the morning and then i drink it nothing is happening nothing is happening guys nothing is happening i'm still they come to check i'm still on one centimeter guys I was so frustrated. I was crying. No pains. 
okay i'm bleeding i'm bleeding i ran out of pads i had to phone my husband to bring me um to buy me pads because so i'm bleeding heavily it's bad so they tell me okay they are going to induce me and see how it goes so the inducement is to to help you you know go into labor that's what i believe but i wasn't going into labor guys i was still on one centimeter this is now day two in hospital and then and then they gave me another another dose and then i drank it when i drank it i was feeling uncomfortable i was feeling this pains but they were not massive and then i still had that line thing on my tummy the line i don't know what they call that thing so i'm thinking to myself god what is happening you know and then the nurse checks my baby's heart rate on the on the on the sheet and then he sh she shakes her head and then she's like i'm, I'm just gonna fetch the doctors to come and see what i'm seeing and then they and then she went to go fetch the doctors and then this doctor went to go fetch another doctor so i have now four doctors if not three doctors on my bed plus the nurse you know and they they talking about me where else i'm still there so i'm thinking to myself what is happening you know what is my baby okay what is going on because they're all passing this shit to each other and i'm freaking out i'm i'm you can literally tell that i want to cry and then one doctor says we need to stop the um the inducement we need to stop it right now we need to stop it we cannot give her any more of this thing um let's just wait and see what will happen in the night you know or this is now six o'clock it's like we just need to stop we d no pains guys the doctors check i'm still on one centimeter and then what actually happened was my son was in distress he was uncomfortable so his heart rate was going up 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 and then going low it's, it's, it's it was like going fast and then it was going slow going fast and going slow so the doctors were like I, I was supposed to take three dosage from my understanding but i only had two so they were like no we need to stop here we can't we can't give her any more of this and then it was such a relief for me to know that uh, my baby was fine and also <sighs> to know that i was fine but i was also very very um hurt very very stressed that my baby was uncomfortable you know my baby was in distress you know because i don't even i don't understand what in induction or inducing does to the baby but i know it's to 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 send you into labor so it should do something to the baby i don't know guys so i'm just gonna leave it here and you just have to stay tuned for part two which is the delivery story thank you so so much for watching don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe don't forget to leave a comment and i'll see you guys in my next video